Okay, so let us now move to part C, in which we're asked to calculate. Let's go back here. So we need to find the heat and the work in all single transformations. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy this over here to have this as a reference. Before you do that, before you start calculating stuff, what we want to be sure is that we know what we're doing, right? Not just randomly calculating because that's when you get into trouble. Over here. Okay, so what are we looking for? We're looking for Q's in and Q's out. These guys, these two guys are adiabatic and reversible. So already right off the bat, we know Q1, 2, Q3, 4 are zero, are nil, right? So there's two Q's we're looking for, Q in and Q out. If you're happy with that before you even start, you know that one is going to be you know, a positive number, the other one is going to be a negative. Or even if you always calculate everything as positive, you know that one has to be going in, whether they're while the other one's going out, right? So you have that in your head already. Likewise, when you're doing the work, we know that when we're going from three to four, right? We know three to four, the gas is expanding, so therefore it requires energy to do so. So it's going to get that energy from the delta U or from Q. In this case, we know Q is nil from three to four, so we know delta U is going to be changing as it goes from three to four. Likewise, but on the other direction, from four to one, here's a work from four to one, and from one to two, back to two, this is where the gas is compressing, so it's releasing energy. It doesn't need any that much energy anymore. So either we're going to see a rise on the delta U, or we're going to see energy leaving in the form of heat, or both, right? So before we start, right, before we do anything, we know that that's the, the kind of situation we have. So regardless of what we're doing, if we're looking for, for instance, if we're looking for uh, work net, which we will, right, that's one of the things we need to find, we know that we're going to have to subtract work from 4 to 1 and from 1 to 2 from the work that we obtain from 3 to 4, simply because 1 is requiring energy, the ones giving away energy. Okay, so those are the kind of things that you need to have in mind before we calculate anything so that we're not making any silly mistakes as we're going for the calculations, all right? So let's start from, let's, let's break it down into the um, individual transformations. Let's start with going from one to two. So from one to two, we have adiabatic, reversible, so adiabatic already tells us straight off the bat that Q from one to two is nil, right? Likewise, uh, three to four. And because this is true, if we apply the first law of thermodynamics, that tells us that Q um, plus or minus work will give us the relationship here. Okay, so at this point in time, if you're comfortable with using one type of sign or the other, one type of convention or the other, you can go ahead and do that. And what I'll do is I'll say that always it's always gonna be negative work. And this means that Whenever I'm doing the compression here, right, I'm doing the compression, then I'm going to get a, get, a, get a positive work. When I'm doing an expansion, I'm going to get a negative work. Okay, so that's what the convention is telling us. But we could do just as the same as if we have in mind what's going on. We could calculate everything as positives, all the works as positives, all the the um, heat as positives, and then just keep in mind that if we want to find, for instance, total heat, we need to get this one and subtract by this one. If we want to find net work, we're going to get this one and subtract by these two here. Okay. So it's your call, really. So what do we have here? Because this is nil, this goes away. So we're left with delta U equals negative work. In our case here, delta U, because CP is a constant and all that, we can take advantage of the fact that CV is just how my delta U is changing with temperature. So therefore, if I integrate this, I'm going to get delta U equals CP delta T. This is true only because CP does not change with temperature. We're assuming that CP does not change with temperature. In reality, we know it does. So what our delta U here is going to be is going to be 0.718 times the difference in temperature that is 721.1 minus 293 Kelvin. And this gives us that delta U equals 307, excuse me, 307.3. Okay, now if we're doing the convention, then that means that we get negative 307.3. Okay, so our delta, our work as we go from one to two, so work from one to two, is going to be negative 307.3. Why is that? Because we know that as we are compressing, as the as the gas is compressing, it's releasing energy. That's where we get the negative. Okay, but again, if we we're not using the same convention, we get positive. We still know it's going away because we still know it's a compression, right? That does not change regardless of the convention we chose to follow. So as long as we understand what's going on, then our lives is are easier. Um, two to three, two to three, we have isochoric, so delta V is zero, and because that is true, then we know that work is zero. Because remember that work is just an integral from P E dV, so dV is zero, so work is nil. So if that's true, then what ends up happening is that, well, if that's true, then delta U equals minus work. This guy is nil, 
so therefore our delta u is equal to our q so we can do the same thing cv delta t from 2 to 3.718 and then the delta t is 2234.1 minus 721.1 this renders about 1000 36.6 okay so r because of the convention we adopted this is going to be positive so therefore q as we're going from two to three is okay and what i'm trying to stress here is that you don't know whether energy is going in or out because of the positive or negative okay if you're doing that you're probably not quite clear on how this works so don't rely on the positives and negatives. What you want to do is really you want to understand what's going on here. We knew from the start this is going to be a energy going in, right? Heat going in. So because I adopted the sign that says that positive Q is going into my system and negative is leaving my system, okay? so then you can obviously conclude that. But I want you to know that beforehand, not because you found one thing or the other. So from three to four, we have something very similar to one before. Because we have an adic press reversible. So once again, we don't have any heat. So that means that my delta U equals that. And we can do delta U the same way. So CV delta T and my CV is 0.18. My delta T is 656.7 minus 22.34.7. Okay, so my delta U is okay. So note that now we have a negative number because we have a negative number over here. So then obviously that means that my delta U has decreased. And if my delta U has decreased, then that energy was used by someone and that someone was work. So that means that so therefore work from three to four is positive. We knew that from the start because we know it is an expansion, so therefore it requires energy to be able to expand, right? And then the last step of the way is let's go, go back to green. It is from four to one. Now notice this is an isobaric, so my delta p does not change. So delta p is zero, right? This does not change, and that doesn't really allow us to eliminate work or heat. We're actually going to have both, right? What we can do though is that because our delta p is zero, we can calculate work from 4 to 1 quite easily because that, you know, that's the integral of 4 to 1 of p dv. And because my p is constant, then that comes out of the integral and we just have p delta v. Okay, so that means that we have 101. We had this value from the start. And then delta v is uh, 1 point. Uh, sorry, my final is 0.83 minus 1.86. So once again, we're going to get a negative value. And that means, again, we knew that from the start because it's compression, but We'll just double check with this sign and uh, let's just check in this because we haven't done that in a while so we have kilopascals here kilopascals on the pressure and then we have meters cubed per kilograms and we know this is a joule so this is the same thing as kilojoules per kilogram we're good to go same unit test everything else this turns out to be um 104 so negative 104.36 and then obviously we can now apply the idea that delta u equals work and heat okay so we can apply this blindly okay we can just calculate delta u and then apply this blindly to find uh, heat but i wanted to point out the following okay we found out that there's a compression and because there's a compression there will be 104 kilojoules per kilogram leaving the system that need, it need to leave it needs to leave the air okay it was part of the energy the air had and now it needs to leave the air somehow it's giving away this energy so there are two options here either we're going to find that our delta u increased or decreased right if it increased perhaps the energy from work is going to our delta u that's 100 percent possible okay but if it decreased then 100 percent both the decrease from this guy and this guy have to be go going away in the form of heat okay so let's find out what's going on on delta u and then we can conclude um whether our heat is where our heat is going so this is again cv delta t in this case we have point it's very usual but our delta t is 293 that's temperature one and temperature four six five six point seven which gives us about approximately 261.14 okay so our delta u decreased okay so we're we need delta u is giving away energy 
but work is giving away energy. The only way that those things can go away is through the form of heat because of the first law of thermodynamics. Okay, so that means that my Q, you can see this, this is straightforward as such. Yeah, sending them up. I'm going to have two negatives, it's going to be a negative um, heat, and that's about, what did I get there? Um, 365. That's If you're one of those people that are always confused by this, you're not sure if it's going, um, this positive is going away, if it's not, then I urge you to look at this and understand what's going on before you start calculating. And after that, it's going to be so much easier. And then and that, if that's the case, if you're sure about what you're doing, you don't have to worry about science. You can always do the greater temperature minus the smaller temperature, T, let's do T2 minus T1. As long as T2 is greater than T1, you can do always do this. And then for instance, um, on this last one here, we had this guy here is smaller than this one, right? So we could do we could easily do T4 minus T1 instead of T1 minus T4. This will, this will always render a positive value, but as long as you understand what's going on, then you can move on. So we got uh, heat for this one. So this is heat going out. We have work for this one. This is compression. We have uh, work for this one. It's an expansion. We have heat for this one. There's nothing there. We have work for this one. There's nothing there. We have heat for this one. It's going in. There's no heat on this first one, and we have work energy being expelled because it's compression. Okay, so cool. We got all the the works and heats. That was part C. Part D. Calculate work net in kilojoules per kilogram. Okay, so again, we have two ways to do that. We can either do the difference between the heat or we can sum up all the, the work. You can do either. Actually, if you have the time, I recommend doing both so that you can double check whether it checks out. All right, so work net. Let's go ahead and do the sum of all the individual works. So that means the sum from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, and 4 to 1. Yeah, if we do that, that means we went around the cycle completely. Now, on 2 to 3, there's no work. This is 0. Okay, so you only need to sum up the others. So this will be um, 307 point nothing, right? No, point 0.3, sorry. Point 0.3 plus 0. Plus 1133 minus 104.36. And this gave me about 322 approximately. Okay, so I'll leave it to you to do the difference between uh, the Qs. That should also render the same result. If it doesn't, then it means we did something incorrect. We need to go back. Okay, so this is the energy that we can extract. Because as the um, fluid is expanding, as the air is expanding, then we know we can use that energy to, as the air expands, we can use that difference to um, get some valuable work out of it, right? That's the whole idea of using a cycle, using an engine, a heat engine, that is. Part E, part E, what is this, part E? Calculate the thermal efficiency of the cycle. Okay, that's straightforward now that we have everything, right? Just need to do the network divided by how much energy we had from the start. So if this was a perfect engine, perfect heat engine, it would do had 100%. We know that's impossible because it's second law. So we need to do how much we can actually get out of it divided by how much was available from the start. So the energy we can actually get out of it is about 722 kilojoules per kilogram. And from the start, we had Q in, which is um, 1,086. So we had 1,086. If we were able to extract all of this, then it would be 100%, but we never are. In this case here, it's actually quite a high efficiency, 66.43, that's the efficiency of this cycle. So that does it for this first question on the final. If you have any questions, let me know. Make sure to like and subscribe to the video if it's helping you out, and we'll see you on the next one for question number two.